diversity policies into a diversity purpose. I'm delighted that you're taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, be a part of this webinar and to understand what it is that we're doing in this space that's bringing about radical changes uh, to the whole diversity and inclusion uh, space. So I'm definitely excited to uh, be able to share this insight with you. And we're going to go ahead and jump straight into to, uh, today's webinar. So give me one second as I do a little housekeeping stuff here. One moment. All right, so let's go ahead and begin uh, our webinar for today. And again, welcome. And before I start, I want to make sure that I'm able to do uh, a little housekeeping here. And I want to make sure that you have a plenty of paper and a pen so that you can take copious notes and you can always email me your questions uh, at the email address that you see on the screen. And uh, please share what you got out of this webinar. You know, what we're doing at this particular point in time at the Purpose Development Institute is that we're hosting these webinar series as educational series to expose more practitioners to a very powerful solution. So make sure that you share what you got out of this webinar because one thing I don't want to do is to waste your time. And I promise you that as you go through this webinar, you're certainly going to see how we're bringing some value added solution uh, to the DNI space. And then you can also email me at the same email address to set up your one on one uh, consultation because I'm going to be revealing some uh, solutions at the end. And I want to make sure that you know what the next steps are for your organization. So please follow those uh, instructions and uh, it will help us out uh, tremendously as we continue to spread this message of how to transform diversity policies into a diversity purpose. So again, my name is Donald Jenkins. And before I get into the meat of the webinar, I'm going to tell you a personal story that's going to communicate to you my passion for being in the DNI space. You know, several years ago, 2009 to be exact, I had a cousin that was actually, uh, life was taken away from him in a double suicide. And what happened was he had fallen in love with a Caucasian young lady and her family did not like the relationship. And he's a very brilliant young man, senior in high school, just been accepted into the Juilliard uh, School of Arts in New York and a bright future ahead of him. So, but at the same time, because of his skin color, uh, his family, her family had a difficult time accepting him into their family. So they did the unthinkable. And uh, it's an extreme case of uh, racial biases, but they committed a double suicide because they uh, came to the conclusion that if they can't spend the rest of their life together, then they would rather take their life. And I tell you this story just to uh, communicate to you the negative effects that unconscious biases can have on us. Uh, it can cause us to lose a lot of things. And in this case, uh, the lives of precious loved ones that we cared about. So that's my passion behind what I do uh, in the DNI at the Purpose Development Institute. I've been doing this for almost 30 years, well over 20,000 hours, vaccine research, scrutinizing deficiencies in human potential. And you're going to see how those deficiencies uh, play when it comes to unconscious biases. Because here are the findings that you know I've discovered in my time of just uncovering these uh, deficiencies. Is that when the human soul is lean in purpose, it increases the risk in the way that people work, lead, build relationships, and build causes. And that's what we essentially have uh, in educational institutions. We have this as well as in uh, the marketplace as well. We have this function in the way that people work, lead, build relationships and culture. And it all goes back to the appetite for purpose. And that's why I put together my diversity purpose webinar because it's going to show you what those dysfunctions are in the diversity and inclusion space. So when a culture is lean in purpose, by default, people would tolerate policies instead of collaborating or uh, celebrating the purpose behind diversity. And that's what we want as practitioners in this space. We want to get to a place where we can help people make that transition. But the traditional training that we've been doing for the last, you know, 50 years, 60 years, uh, is, is, is very insufficient in that area because people feel like that this is something that they simply have to tolerate if they're going to work 
at this particular organization. So we want to begin to move them to a place of celebrating the purpose behind diversity. That's why I created the diversity purpose uh, system, because it shows you what that purpose behind diversity is all about. So let's talk about four takeaways, and I want to make sure I'm communicating to you. Number one, understand the need for a diversity purpose. Number two, identify the components of a diversity purpose. And number three, recognize the path of building a diversity purpose. And then number four, the motivation to commit to a diversity purpose. So four things here that I want to make sure that you get. Understanding, identification, recognizing that path, and the motivation to commit to building a diversity purpose. Because that's where we are in the 21st century. We need that motivation. And hopefully by immersing you in this process, uh, this introduction as to what diversity purpose is all about, you begin to develop and cultivate that motivation for your organization as well. You see the value in doing that. So let's start with this very powerful thought here is that diversity and inclusion is more than talk. You know, since it's, it's been 50 years, over 50 years since Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, death, and we have not realized that coming to the table to talk about differences is a small matter compared to raising the diversity purpose IQ to build a table that feeds the appetite for purpose. See, for years, we've been coming to the table, and we've been talking about what those differences are, and that is the traditional framework for DNI initiatives is that let's come to the table, let's talk about what those differences are. Most of our trainings in the 21st century is filled with that type of training. But we have to make a shift if we really want to affect change in this area. And that is helping individuals understand what it's going to take to build that table, raise their diversity purpose IQ, so that now they can build the table that feeds the appetite for purpose. See, when we build a table that feeds the appetite for purpose, everyone benefits. And that's why I want to make sure that you're able to go through this presentation so you can understand what those dynamics are. That's going to put your organization in a better position to where everyone benefits. Everyone can walk away from the table feeling like they have something of value. All right. So, again, let's talk about uh, unchaining your employees or students because we this focus is for both higher education institutions, as well as corporate uh, organizations as well. So we are the only company in the world that measures your diversity purpose IQ. One thing that I always tell my clients is that it's hard to change what you can't measure. So we start out measuring that diversity purpose IQ. All right. And you can see here on the screen, it says, when employees cannot determine the role that purpose plays in diversity, they will remain chained to discriminatory biases that undermine the purpose of diversity. And this is where most organizations are at, that you have a policy in place, but at the same time, people are chained to their discriminatory bias. So how, what is it that we can do to help unchain them? And that's why I, you're going through the Diversity Purpose webinar, because purpose is the primary source for achievement, stated by Nikos Moko Johannes, Harvard business expert. If you're going to achieve anything significant in diversity, you have to start with the foundation of purpose. This is where everything starts. It's the primary source for everything that you want to achieve within your organization. So we are the only organization in the world that measures the diversity purpose IQ, which puts us in a very powerful position to be able to minimize the risk for your organization. So speaking of risk, let's talk about high risk. The failure to build a table that feeds the appetite for purpose will increase the risk of policy violations within your organization. This is where most organizations are at. They, they completely rely on the policy to do what the heart is not conditioned to do. What they fail to realize is that diversity is a, is a matter of the heart and not a matter of policy. But yet at the same time, we rely on the policy because the heart is not conditioned to make diversity a heart matter. So that's what your diversity purpose webinar is all about, is to take you through a process to help you understand how to build that diversity purpose so that now diversity will become a matter of the heart. So when the risk is high for violating policies, collaborations will be 
uh, will always be a challenge. I'm going to say it again. When risk is high for violating policy, collaborations will be uh, a challenge in all organizations. And that's where many organizations find themselves. So let's talk about some risk management here. Uh, the problem with relying on diversity policies to be the only solution for managing the risk is that most policies lack the backbone to move individuals to embrace a change in culture. That's right. See, the culture has changed. And I have a very, uh, a very uh, prominent mentor that told me many years ago that the more that things change, the more there's a need for things that never change. I'm going to say that again. The more that things change, the more there's a need for things that never change. And the thing that never change is the appetite for purpose. And that's why you want to help your organization make that shift. Because when you make that shift to feeding the appetite for purpose, building that table, you can minimize the risk of individuals compromising their diversity, uh, their diversity initiatives under certain conditions, which is what we have within our organizations in the 21st century. So let's talk about group representation. Instead of achieving better collaboration, the organization will become a battle zone for group representation. That's what we have in the 21st century. We have many groups that have emerge you know the culture has changed in both on on college campuses and in the marketplace and the marketplace and college campuses were filled with we we created these battle zones for groups so when the people battle for group representation it undermines the mission of diversity and inclusion so this is where you want to be you want your organization your culture to be a place where all colors can thrive and not just survive See, many people in these different groups that want group uh, representation, vying for group representation, they feel like that they're in survival mode. See, when you remove purpose out of the mix, it put people in survival mode. But when you introduce purpose back into the mix, now you begin to change the dynamics of the culture to where now people are adding value to one another. And that's the reason why it's certainly important. So the battle for power. Uh, the battle between groups is a battle for power. However, if you desire to win the battle for diversity and inclusion, the culture must shift from feeding the appetite for power to feeding the appetite for purpose. That's how you're going to win the battle. That's why I'm excited to be able to present this opportunity to you because I'm giving you tools and resources to win this battle, not to just continue to do the same thing, expecting different results. You know what that's called? That's called insanity. So you want to make sure that your organization is not practicing does not have insane practices. You want them to have sane practices that's going to value everyone within your organization. Dr. King stated that power, when properly understood, is the ability to achieve, pur to achieve purpose. So the question in the 21st century is, how do we achieve the purpose? You know, back during the days of civil rights, you know, people gave their life because of a purpose, because of a cause. How do we recreate that in the 21st century? Well, there's a method to the madness. There's a method and a science behind creating that, that appetite or building that appetite, feeding that appetite for purpose, and to get into a place to be able to achieve purpose within your organization. So we live in a world where we are prone to feed the appetite for power, but come short in what it takes to feed the appetite for purpose. Now, my job is to help your company make the shift, all right? Diversity practitioners must understand the dynamics for shifting the organization from a policy-driven culture to one that gives new life to DNI initiatives. So the question is, how do you make that shift from lifeless policies to a vibrant purpose? All right. It's difficult to breathe life into diversity without a heart that's conditioned for purpose. See, we have a heart problem in the 21st century, and we have not addressed that heart problem in our organization. And that's what the diversity purpose is designed to do to help you transition from a lifeless policy to having a vibrant purpose. Isn't that exciting? You know, that you can understand how to develop that skill set. So now you understand the need. Let's identify the components of a diversity purpose. All right. So when you examine the components for creating a diversity purpose, you explore the dynamics that move DNI initiatives from the head to the heart. So in the 21st century, I'm sure that you would agree that it's time to move those initiatives from the head down to the heart. Well, how do you do that? Let's look at the components of being able to do that. Number one, 
you have to have training that expands the capacity for purpose. You have a training for a whole lot of different things, intercultural competence, and all the things that's associated with diversity and inclusion in the 21st century, bias training, sensitivity training. We have that, difference training, all right? Well, you have to have training that expands the capacity for purpose, and I'm gonna show you why. You have to have a culture that feeds the appetite for purpose. I'm gonna show you why that's important as well. Then we have to have people who have a diversity courage. And that's where you want to be in your organization. You want to have people that have a diversity courage. And we'll talk more about that as we move forward. So defining diversity purpose, all right? So expanding the capacity for purpose begins with defining what it is to have a diversity purpose. And what does it mean to your organization? Number one, this is how we define it. It's where people within an organization or society embrace purpose as the genius for exploring the collective power of human potential. See, for years, since diversity training has come onto the scene, we've explored rights, you know, when it comes to the collective power of human potential. And we figured it out that exploring rights is not moving the needle for better collaboration. We have to begin to explore the genius of purpose. Because in the genius of purpose is where you're going to find the collective power of human potential. So this is how your organization is going to benefit. When purpose is the genius used for exploring the collective power of human potential, it will minimize the battle for group rights. Because I'm sure that you will agree, you feel it, that every group have rights and they want their rights to be heard. Well, the way that we can begin to help them make that shift, we can open up the genius of purpose. And that's what the diversity purpose is designed to do, to open up the genius of purpose so that now you can really see the collective power of human potential. You're transferring the skill set. You're not polarizing your audience or your employees or your students. You're galvanizing them, you know, for a common cause. And that's what we need in the 21st century. We need a galvanizing solution, not a solution that's going to polarize audience or our employees or the students that are on our campus. So this process is more sophisticated than group identification. DNI is a sophisticated process that requires all groups to embrace a sophistication beyond group identification. That's where we struggle. We struggle in identifying that sophistication beyond our individual group. So the Declaration of Independence stated that all men are created equal. But in order for DNI initiatives to be successful, everyone within your organization must be trained to recognize that all men are also created to expand their capacity for purpose. That's the training of the 21st century. That's what your diversity purpose is going to help you do. It's going to help you understand what it means to expand your capacity for, for purpose. Now, we're used to bias training. You know, Starbucks did a great job on May, May 29th. Uh, they was forced into this place a bias training, and they took extreme measures, you know, to ensure that employees are prepared to avoid the negative effects of biases. But here's one thing you have to realize: is that most organizations fail to realize that when the capacity for a higher purpose is not exercised, the risk would be high for discriminatory biases to reduce others to inferior classes based on race, creed, age sexual orientation, et cetera. This is the reason why this is important. This type of training cannot continue to be ignored. So the capacity for purpose training is the most neglected training in DNI initiatives. You know, many practitioners never heard of the capacity for purpose. My company is pioneering and leading the way in that area because it's gonna bring about solutions. It's defined as the ability to expand value beyond group identification. See, if we continue to focus on rights, it's difficult to expand value when we focus specifically on the rights that identify with a particular group. So when we look at expanding the capacity for purpose, now we begin to build value beyond group identification, which is certainly what we need in the 21st century. So when the capacity for purpose is high, it will cause individuals to shift from demands for rights to adding value back to the world. And that's what you want in your organization. 
you want students, you want employees, you want leaders who understand how they can add value back to the world, back to the culture. See, that's the type of training that we need. How can we expand their capacity for purpose, show them how they can add value? So it's the capacity for purpose that opens the path for making room for the purpose of others. That's what racism and discrimination is all about, that people are struggling to make room for the purpose of other people. But when you help them expand their capacity for purpose, which is a different skill set, now you put them in a better position to make room for the purpose of other people, not for the skin color, not for the group identification the sexual orientation, but for the purpose of the people that they are working with so that now you can build better collaboration in that particular situation. So expanding the capacity for purpose lead to the path that strengthens the commitment to a diversity purpose. So here's the deal. I'm taking you through this process and hopefully you're having a commitment check. What is your commitment to this process? Obviously, you're committed to, the, to diversity and inclusion, but now, I'm challenging you to take your commitment to another level. So cultivating a commitment beyond EEO. Uh, the fact remains is that equal rights are delayed when there's a deficiency in purpose. And that's the biggest problem when it comes to DNI, is that there's a deficiency in purpose. And when you address that issue, then you can begin to address the issue from the root cause and begin to affect change in new ways. So if your organization do not address the deficiency of purpose within the culture, the risk for discrimination will be high. EEO compliance is a critical need, but not at the expense of helping individuals move from compliance to collaboration. That's what my company is designed to do. We are experts in helping your team, your organization, build a culture that will transition from compliance to co collaboration. So purpose is the chemotherapy that destroys the cancerous effect of discrimination and all the negative biases that people have. So what you want is a policy with the backbone, all right? So policy empowers the organization, but purpose empowers the people. So if you want a policy with backbone, you want to make sure that you have people who understand how to feed their appetite for purpose. So if your DNI initiatives remain text on a written piece of paper, Individuals will struggle moving diversity from their head to their heart. It will feel like they are being forced like animals to embrace differences, and no one likes to be forced. However, when DNI becomes a matter of purpose, the focus will shift to what I call the common core, where the appetite for purpose will be fed, and your policy will have backbone beyond the classroom. That's what you want. You want to have an organization, you have a policy. But you want that policy to have backbone beyond classroom. That brings us to treating the common core. That's what we do at the Purpose Development Institute. We treat the common core. So for years, you know, diversity training hadn't changed since the 1960s. All right. Hadn't changed since the 1960s uh, when diversity training first began. Training is designed to treat competing differences instead of treating the common core. And we want to be in a better position to treat the common core. So the common core is the value we share the young skin color. And without the proper treatment, people will never develop purpose, diversity, courage. If we don't treat the common core, which is the appetite for purpose, they will never have a diversity courage. They will never be able to move the policy beyond the classroom. They will never be able to take ownership you know, over their unconscious biases and take ownership for feeding the appetite for purpose or ownership for adding value back to the world. And you want to make sure that you're able to mitigate that. So now the path for renewed commitment is revealed. You are ready for diversity purpose motivation. You're ready for it. Hopefully by now you're already feeling the commitment, you're feeling the motivation, but let's close it out with some more insight here. So why would someone write this? This is a book by Heather McDonald titled, Diversity delusion. In other words, this is what she stated in her book. Diversity in the academy purported to be about bridge building and broadening people's experience. It has had the opposite effect, dividing society, reducing learning, and creating an oppositional mindset 
that prevents individuals from seizing the opportunities available available to them. This is what she wrote in her book that's, that really highlights a lot of things that's going on on college campuses and is making its way into the marketplace, is that diversity has, has, has been counterproductive, the way that we train people in group rights. That's why the shift has to take place to expand in the capacity for purpose so that now we can galvanize people and not polarize people in this process. So the motivation is gonna lead to what I call a diversity curve. This is when people develop skills to move diversity from the diversity policies from the head to the heart. They know your policy, but give them skills on how to move it from their head to their heart. So as a practitioner, you must understand that differences opens the heart, but raising the diversity purpose IQ penetrates the heart to move the soul to action. That's what we are experts in here at the Purpose Development Institute. We can help you understand how to move the soul to action because we have the process, the system of how to penetrate the heart. So remember, it's difficult to breathe new life into diversity without a heart that's conditioned for a higher purpose. So feeding appetite for purpose is a di disruptive process. And that's what I am here to help you do in the 21st century. So conditioning the heart begins by defining the appetite for purpose. It's the sum total of your existence that gives you a meaning to exist and a purpose to perform. That's what everybody wants, regardless of what group that they're in, what their racial background, ethnic background might be. They want to have a meaning to exist and a purpose to perform. In other words, why am I doing this? See, so here's the benefit. The meaning to exist is the antithesis of racial bias. When you give people a purpose, help them understand how to feed the appetite for purpose, then guess what? They displace those racial bias. So the purpose to perform releases the courage to act beyond bias. And that's what you want as a practitioner. You want people to begin to act. So now, it's time to disrupt the culture. So feeding the appetite for purpose, disrupt traditional training by doing three things. Disruption is a process. So for years, we've experienced disruption in technology. Now it's time to experience disruption in the way that we advance our DNI initiative. So making diversity and inclusion accessible to everyone by cultivating a common goal through meaningful excellence. The common goal that everyone in your organization have is that they have this innate desire to add meaning to what they're doing. So our training allows them to perfect meaningful excellence, which is one of the biggest appetites of the human soul. Number two, exploring the sophistication of the soul to attract new people to the conversation. People are tired of hearing the same old thing when it comes to DNI initiative. They want to have new models, and with those new models, going to come new people to help move that conversation and attitude and behaviors forward. Number three, creating a coherent value network that leads everyone better off. That's what I am here to help you with, is that when you go through a diversity purpose training, everyone in your organization is gonna be left better off. No group will be left out. That's what this process is designed to do. So when you open the aperture of purpose, we do more to value the plights of different groups. My job is to help open the aperture of purpose. The problem with DNI initiatives is that we have not been looking through the eyes of purpose. We've been looking through the eyes of differences, and now it's time to open up that aperture. Purpose is the genius by which the collective power of human potential must be explored. So again, I want to challenge you to explore our training initiative, our training options. You will have the keynote speaking to your employees or your students. Very powerful process to begin to cultivate their interest in a diversity purpose, penetrating that heart. Very powerful and motivational presentation that's designed to stir the culture up to prepare them for a diversity purpose. We have one-on-one -on -one group coaching for you know your leaders. We have both one-on-one -on -one and group. Then we have a customized two-day staff training very intense training that I put you through that help you understand how to measure your diversity purpose IQ. We have an online self-paced training. Then we have our diversity purpose leadership track. And then we also have the diversity purpose certification, which is a new 
uh, initiative that I'm launching at this moment. So again, use that email that I revealed to you in the beginning. Contact me for the next step. Don't let your organization continue to rely on the policy to do what the heart is not conditioned to do. Understand the importance. Make that commitment to build that diversity purpose. And I promise you, it's going to be the best investment that you've ever made for your organization. So again, this is Donald Jenkins. Make sure that you share what you got out of this webinar. Share that with me as we continue to spread this message of the diversity purpose. God bless you.